um, let's dive right in. So uh, first off, what is actually a lay summary? And um, yeah, with the help of a lay summary, you as an author make your research accessible to the general public. Anyone who takes an interest um, will be enabled to understand your research in doing so. You will engage new readers in the topic of your scientific discovery while you're engaging with others by casting a wider net. You automatically increase the chances and possibility of new and exciting collaborations that you didn't even know exist before. Collaborations can be, to give you a few examples, with citizens, patient groups, other scientists, and even entire organizations. And um, let me just check here. Yes, and uh, coming to the following slide, a lay summary very much raises the visibility of your scientific research and, uh, and it also opens up new opportunities. Um, yeah, right. All of this with a lay summary, you may ask yourself, how can this be done? At this time, I would like to hand over the webinar to Elaine to share with you some basic principles around constructing a lay summary. Take it away, Elaine. Thank you, Daniel. Um, let's go ahead and dive into the how of putting together a lay summary. Um, so I'd like to begin by sharing a quote from uh, Stephen Jay Gould with you, which provides some historical perspective on writing for a general audience. Uh, some of you may be familiar with his work, but for those who aren't, briefly, um, Dr. Gould was an American paleontologist and evolutionary biologist and a historian of science. Uh, he was one of the most influential and widely read authors of popular science in his generation. Um, he spent most of his career teaching at Harvard University uh, or working at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And he was known by the general public mainly for his 300 popular essays uh, in Natural History magazine and his numerous books written for both the scientist and non-scientist. So he shares with us anything, even the conceptually most complex material, can be written for general audiences without any dumbing down. Of course, you have to explain things carefully. This goes back to Galileo, who wrote his great books as dialogues in Italian, not as treatises in Latin. And to Darwin, who wrote The Origin of Species for General Readers. I think a lot of people pick up Darwin's book and assume it must be a popular version of some technical monograph. But there is no technical monograph. That is what he wrote. Um, so this quote is a great segue for us to begin to walk through how we can master sharing science with a general audience. It's great uh, when you think about writing a lay summary to start off with a can-do positive attitude when you approach the work uh, of constructing one, because the reality is uh, it can be more difficult um, to write for the general public than for your science peers. However, in your favor is the fact that the lay summary is really your story to tell. You get to decide what is important, what needs to be filtered, and how to introduce expected or unexpected results. Here we have a sample lay summary outline. We all know that lay summaries come in many forms and many lengths, typically anywhere from 100 to 1,000 words, um, and this outline is so basic that you can apply it to a lay summary that is a paragraph long or that is five paragraphs long. The length of the lay summary, which can feel restrictive sometimes, is really technical. The biggest challenge you'll <clears throat> need to surpass is being able to choose the right words and share them in the right way to grab the attention and interest of your reader so you can explain what your science means. Uh, so let's spend some time thinking about how we might be able to meet that challenge. It's always safe to say uh, a good place to start is the beginning. And <laughs> when I think about the beginning of a lay summary, I like to think about first impressions. 
So the lay summary differs from peer scientific writing in that when you prepare a lay summary, it's important to open with your take home message. You want from the get go to be upfront and direct with your reader and really kick things off with the most important thing that you would like to share. So let's take a look at a lay summary example that breaks down the messaging in an introductory paragraph. Let's consider the questions a curious reader might ask, beginning with, why are we here? Um, so the opening in this example shares directly and upfront that epilepsy is the most common serious childhood neurologic disorder, and that a diagnosis of epilepsy requires a young person to make adjustments. You next have an opportunity to address the says who question that your reader may be wondering about. And so this provides a chance for you to build the reader's trust in the story that you're going to go on to tell. Um, in this introduction, it's possible to relate that prior research and studies have been able to demonstrate that these problems do exist in young people with epilepsy. So at this point, you've been direct about the magnitude of the problem and shown there is evidence to support the existence of the problem. Next up is uh, addressing the so what question. <clears throat> the so what message here is that this is a big problem. We have proof it exists, and if you continue to read this summary, you will learn about effective ways to provide help to young people with epilepsy. By sharing the possibility to impact young people with epilepsy, you are, your, you are enticing uh, your reader to continue reading. Uh, 